Welcome to the first example of using the properties of a perpendicular transversal of parallel lines to determine the measure of angles. Let's take a look at our first figure. So here we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal and we're given that it forms a right angle with the second parallel line. Well remember that if a line is perpendicular to one parallel line, it's also going to be perpendicular to the other parallel line. So we can go ahead and mark the corresponding angle here as a right angle. Remember when a perpendicular transversal cuts two parallel lines, it forms eight right angles or eight angles that measure 90 degrees. So this angle here would also be a right angle and therefore it would measure 90 degrees. So by using the angle addition postulate, we can conclude that x degrees plus 2x degrees must be equal to 90 degrees. I'll leave off the degrees for right now. Let's go ahead and solve this equation for x. We would have 3x equals 90. And we divide both sides by 3. We have x equals 30. And therefore, this angle here that measures x degrees would be 30 degrees. And this angle here that is 2x degrees would be 2 times 30 or 60 degrees. And again, notice that the sum of these two angles is equal to 90 degrees. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have two figures and again we want to determine the measure of the missing angles. Looking at this first figure, this ray here is perpendicular to the line and therefore we have a right angle on the left and on the right, which means both of these angles have a measure of 90 degrees. So the sum of these two angles would be 90 degrees or these two angles would be complementary. So 5x minus 11 plus 3x minus 7 has to be equal to 90. Let's go ahead and solve this equation for x and then we can come back and determine the measure of each of these angles. Let's go ahead and combine like terms. So we'd have 8x this would be negative 11 plus negative 7. That's going to be plus negative 18 or just minus 18 equals 90. We'll add 18 to both sides. So we have 8x equals 108. Divide both sides by 8. So we get 13 and 1 half or 13.5. Now that's not our answer. Remember each of these angles is represented by an expression so now we have to take the value of x and sub it into each of these expressions. So this angle here would be 5 times 13.5 minus 11. This will give us 67.5 minus 11. So we'll have 56.5 degrees for this angle here. Now we know these angles are complementary. So one way of determining the second angle would be to take 90 degrees and subtract 56.5 and that would give us 33.5 degrees. But Let's go ahead and check this. If we know x is equal to 13.5, 3 times 13.5 minus 7 should equal 33.5. Let's just check this. This is 40.5 minus 7 which does give us 33.5. So our angle of 33.5 degrees is correct. Let's go and take a look at this second example. Notice these three angles form a straight angle. So if this is 90 degrees, the sum of the remaining two angles must also be 90 degrees. So it's very similar to the problem above. Let's go ahead and clear this out. We would have 6x plus 1 plus 5x plus 1 must equal 90. So we'll combine our like terms. We have 6x plus 5x, that's 11x. And then 1 plus 1, that'll be plus 2 equals 90. Subtract 2 on both sides. We have 11x equals 88. Dividing both sides by 11, we have x equals 8. So for this angle here, we'd have 5 times 8, that's 40 plus 1. That's 41 degrees here. And we know these two angles are complementary, so this should leave us with 49 degrees here. Let's just check it. 
Six times eight is 48 plus one, and that is 49 degrees. We'll take a look at one more example in part two.